Katrina Smart, Coco and Co. Have you seen her online? Like, have you seen what she's been able to build on her own? Those dimples? She is unbelievable. I really look up to her in terms of what she's been able to do on a digital level, on a, a social media level, as an influencer. I admire what she does as a mom. Here is gutsy Katrina Smart. Katrina, <laughs> thanks for this. Of course. You are the bomb.com. <laughs> Thank you. Literally. So are you. And I, girl, you know, we're just, I'm just, you know, in awe of, of all that you do. And I know it's not easy. <laughs> People look look at your pretty pictures yeah. and all the stuff you're putting out, but there's stuff. There's there's so many things going on behind the scenes, um, and I I ask to speak with you because I know that in order to get to that point, you must have taken some some huge risks in your life and taken a chance. And so, can we start kind of with what your maybe what your biggest risk has been? Um, I think. I think in order to be an entrepreneur, to start your own business, you have to not be risk averse. So basically you have to be willing to take risks. So that's basic, that has to be in your DNA if you're going to be in it for the long haul. So when you ask me that question, it's kind of like, I feel like I'm always taking risks. Like Every morning I wake up, it's a risk. But um, most recently, the biggest risk I took is I took on a partner and a partner in all of my businesses. So um, we started a new PR firm, Halo PR. Um, but she also became a partner in Coco & Co. Um, because Coco & Co. was, was um, a corporation, but I was the sole proprietor. I was the only person running it. Um, I had people that I worked with and employees, but I was it was just me making the final decision on everything. And I knew in order to grow, I needed someone who had some of the things that I did. So I had the strength in, in creativity, um, in a lot of connections and um, great relationships and creating the content, but I, I don't, I'm not a cutthroat business person, <laughs> so yeah. I needed someone who uh, was going to ask to push more, um, to repitch pitches that are sent to me, which I was doing, but I wanted someone who knew how to ask for more because I wasn't getting, I was, I was at a ceiling and I wasn't being able to push through. But that must have been difficult though to sort of give up that control. This is your baby, something you built on your own for so long, now to go and yeah. share it with someone else, yeah. right? So that, you must have put a lot of thought into that. Um, when it was the right person, there was no, not much thought that came into it. It was actually quite casual. I had a great conversation. You have these great conversations that you, that you, in the moment they're great, but then years later you're like, yes, yes, it's coming, all coming true now. So I was speaking to Ruth Tal, who owns Fresh Restaurants, and she was saying to me, she has two partners. She has, and, and I was like, well, why do you have partners? She's like, she started all on her own. She's like, well, I took partners because I wasn't strong in everything. And I'd rather them take a piece of the business and the money because the business is going to do better as a result of having their expertise. I feel like you're speaking to me right now, by the way, first of all. I was just having this conversation with my husband about all the different oh, there's so many things. aspects. There's so many things. Right? It's not just about like writing blogs, like here I am. Oh, yeah, yeah there's so many more. Things. So what do you think, what, what has taking risks meant for you? How has it manifested in your life? Has it all been good? Have you seen, you know? No, I think you have to get really comfortable with failure. That's another thing. Like you have to be like. I, at first, I was so not comfortable with failure. I'd be like, I always did well in school. I, I always excelled and always did things that I was really good at. So as soon as you open a business and you start um, putting yourself out there, you fail on a daily basis. But you almost have to be able to be really good at being like, okay, that didn't work. What's next? Mm -hmm. I mean, learn from that. What yes. can I learn? Move on. Take it to yeah, the next. Yeah, exactly. And you learn lessons. And even last week, I was like. Something like a horrible thing happened and I was just like, there's a lesson in this, there's a lesson in this, and I'm like trying so hard to find the lesson. And it took, it was two weeks ago, it took a week for me to be like, ah, that's a lesson, you know? So there's there's lessons in everything, and there's lessons in failure, and you never, you never get better unless you fail. If you're always doing the right thing, you're probably not doing enough. What do you think, what's your advice for people who are, you know, want to take a leap, want to do something risky? Um, 
Oh, there's so many things. Just do it, one. Stop thinking about it. If you want to do something, um, start today. You can think and think and think and think and think and think and think about all the different ways it's going to fail, but you're not going to know until you actually put yourself out there, right? You have to prepare yourself for that in terms of you build up some kind of mindset. Is there like, you know, internally, the internal prep that that takes to just do it. Yeah. Is that something you're born with? Do you yeah. go to seminars? Do you psych yourself up? Right, I think it's different for everybody. Mm -hmm. I think there are natural entrepreneurs. I think there are people like my ex-husband, born to be an entrepreneur. There's also people that just don't work within the system, right? It's very hard for them to wake up and think every day they have to be somewhere from nine to five. Uh, but that doesn't mean you're a business person. Just because you don't like structure, because being a business person means you have to create your own structure, which is almost way more difficult than someone saying to you, you have to be here at this time and you can leave at this time, right? When you're, you're, you're a business owner, uh, it, the clock never turns off. So uh, you want, what you'll start missing is like when people say, oh, I'm done work, uh, like do you want to go do this? So like, yeah, I can do that, but I'm going to be working the whole time. Well. Like when you're on vacation, you're going to be working. There's never going to be a moment. Like I was having my daughter and I was responding to emails. No, stop. Oh, <laughs> Does having a, a kid make you more risky because you want to do the things you want to show her that yeah. you can be all that you can be, or does it make you say like, oh god, I don't want right. to mess things up because I got this kid. Yeah, it's both. It's, for me, the, what propelled me further in what I was doing was having my daughter because I wanted instantly, I'm like, wow, she has to be proud of me. So it has. I have to do more. Like I have to show her, I never wanted, my mom worked really, really hard and I wanted her I had that really great like inspiration behind me and I wanted my daughter to think the same way of me. What what is gutsy? What does that word mean to you? Anything gut gutsy? How do you mean that To be gutsy is to is to take a risk and not really care. Like be interested in the feedback, but not really care that someone's gonna be like, you suck, you're ugly, you're fat, you're like whatever. It's just like, yeah I am, but like I think what I'm doing is more important than your negativity. Act in spite of. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it. I like you. And I thank do. you so of much. Course. <laughs>